It's hello for love, everybody. It's Leah here from Island Girl Views. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we have uh, some very special guests uh, on here tonight. So I will I won't be long, <laughs> but I just want to uh, start of start with prayer, as we always do on Talon or Sa'o. Um, we're just going to start with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to bring our beautiful guests on. So, uh, Lord, thank you for your your um, plan for our lives. Thank you, God, that we can come together tonight. We pray for your blessing and your favour uh, over our conversations tonight. And we pray a special blessing for Marta, uh, Philip, and uh, for Danielle too. We thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. So, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to, uh, um, I was going to say Talon or something because it's so close to my heart and I always say it. So, uh, Island Girl Views is, uh, is my show. Uh, but I would like to uh, introduce uh, Marta and Danielle, which is why I know you've uh, joined me tonight. Uh, so, I'm going to introduce them and uh, bring them to uh, into the show. So, welcome, Marta. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Uh, Lovely to be here. Welcome, Danielle. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for thank Great you both be for here. being thank here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. I I just thought actually this is is quite timely uh, for us to be here to have a conversation and to just you know take people back on a journey in regards to um, Graham. And uh, I just want to let people know that I actually knew Graham before all of this happened. You know, we were together, uh, we did one show together on Telegram and it was around free speech. And we sort of, we, we were actually, uh, I got to know Graham a little bit uh, during that time. And so just have a special, you know, a little connection with him before things happen. So Marta, I just uh, want to start with you. Um, you know, big news this week, but I just want you to just just give us a little bit of your story, you know, way back from, it's been a year now since uh, your husband has been in prison. So just, just give us a little bit of a story that people can understand uh, where you're at now. Thank you, Marta. Um, yes, Graham, um, my story um, at the moment revolves around Graham, uh, although he's not uh, currently present in my life physically. He's pretty much my story. Um, yeah, so it's coming up a year. The 8th of December will be uh, one year uh, since his arrest. And uh, uh, it has been um, hard is an understatement. It's, it has been beyond hard. It's, it's been a real challenge. Um, but throughout this, throughout this whole time and this whole situation, uh, one very good thing that uh, happened is that I got closer to the Lord because it's moments like this that you realize how much we are so, so removed from Him. And um, it's unfortunate that needs something like that for you to uh, um, get closer to the Lord because He's always there. Uh, if there is any distance, it's put there by us, not by him. Uh, and it certainly has served to draw me really, really close to him. And he is my rock. Um, so this this year, um, AA has represented probably the biggest challenge of my life. Uh, but I can also safely say that I have grown a lot in the, in the Lord. And he has given me the strength um, to uh, to survive. And uh, mm. sometimes even thrive. <laughs> um, but yes, it has been uh, very challenging. You you have in this journey, uh, you've had Danielle, which has just been an incredible support. Uh, I remember coming down to Taupo and, and speaking, spending time with you both. Uh, just how incredible this this woman is, <laughs> Danielle, you know, who has started the page, who has just relentlessly uh, supported and the, I've, I've seen the way she's replied to some people that have needed to be put in their place. <laughs> but uh, Danielle, uh, tell us about where you came into uh, this journey. Okay, so Graham and Marta both uh, 
good friends. And um, obviously, the day came, Graham was arrested, and um, I actually went on for months to start with, didn't really know what to do, could just be there for Marta and, um, you know, in any way that I could. And But I started getting really concerned um, when it came to what was actually happening within the within the prison and um, you know the, the letters that Graham had written to MPs and um, it came to a point where actually his life was in danger and yeah. we knew that he was actually in mortal danger when I thought this can't go on any further we need to um, and I spend all that time like writing to MPs, every minister you can think of. Um, and I encouraged Marta to take go public. We got to a stage where, um, well, I don't know if, if you've read any of the letters that, uh, that are on the Facebook page. Yeah. Um, we have, yeah, his life is in danger, basically, and something yes, needs to uh, be done. So... Yeah, because he so, wrote um, he wrote a letter, didn't he, to the Daily Examiner as well, in regards to what was going on in the prison. So um, there are things, though, and I I just need to say this to the audience: there are some things that we cannot talk about. Uh, so if, no. if there feels like there's missing pieces, uh, it's only because legally we cannot talk about it. But we okay. can uh, look at this at Graham's life through. Marta's eyes and Danielle's eyes. So yeah. just uh, just hold up in the, on your judgment of this and, and just listen to their hearts as to where this has been. So, Danielle, you started uh, a page. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yes. So um, it was, well, Marta went public through Counterspin to start off with to share her story, and that's when I set up the Facebook page as well, just to raise awareness because... All our letters, every, you know, we, Marta crying out to um, the local MPs and we were just being ignored. It was all falling on deaf ears, um, you know, gone as far as the ombudsman, people right at the top. And we just get, you know, pushed from one place to another and nothing was happening. So to raise awareness, I set up a Facebook page and, um, yeah, that's... Well, I sort of became yeah. involved it's, with that. Um, and it was actually, there was so much information that came through there that was really informative to people who were getting a different different narrative or a different story. It was so good that you addressed things as they came up, which is how most of us knew mm -hmm. when the court cases were going to be and how many of them were postponed. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. incredibly frustrating yeah. for Marsha. I, I just, yeah. I'm just going to bring up this question that somebody's asked here, which is very valid, and it's why doesn't the Lord help Graham get released? And uh, there was the answer straight away from Phil, who said because the Lord needs to send a message through Graham. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, to the audience who is here, is. thank you for, yeah. you know, just um, being part of this and understanding what has uh, transpired. And so... You're both from Taupo, Taupo, you're both from Taupo, and you have been there for quite a few years. You've uh, raised your family there, Marta, and um, is that right? Or uh, did... No, actually, my children were raised in Rotorua. Okay, all right. Yeah. And we moved here uh, only after our, our youngest uh, went to university. Oh, right, and then you met, moved then. Yes, which was uh, right. 2018. Okay, before everything happened. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so just um, in regards to, uh, well, what we can speak about, uh, are you able to talk about what actually happened on that day that the police came to your house? Are you able to speak about that? Um, yes, I can. Um, yeah, they knocked on our door very early. Uh, it would have been about 7 a.m. Um, Graham was already up. I wasn't. And uh, Graham opened the door and they came in. Um, and um, I woke up with two police officers in my bedroom. 
uh, they were already there and um, they asked me to uh, get up and uh, um, I did and they moved in <laughs> for the day and removed Graham out of the house um, completely. He put some clothes over his pajamas and uh, he left and until about a month ago that was the last time I had seen him. Um, and they stayed in our house until 4 p.m. Uh, gathering evidence, I suspect. They took uh, all the electronic gear, every single scrap of electronics was taken that day, and uh, um, stuff from the garage, uh, you name it, so much, boxes upon boxes of things that they took to the police station. Um, to this day, none of them have been returned with the exception of my computer and Graham's car, which I sold um, because I needed the money. Um, but mm -hmm. everything else they still have are with them, including old phones that uh, we hadn't been used, was just spare. Um, they took everything. Did they ever say about returning any of this or did they? I have, I have raised the subject. Sorry, I have raised the subject with them um, many times about, re about returning my phone and some other old phones, even some of Graham's clients' computer and, and uh, um, hard drive and so on. They still have them. They have not returned. They returned my computer because I said to them, I need a computer. If I can't have my computer, I want one of yours <laughs> because I need it in my house to do work. And uh, they returned my computer then, but uh, um, nothing else. And uh, I don't know. I hope one day those things will be returned, but so far not yet. So uh, in that time, the time span of him being arrested to when you were able to actually see him and visit him, can you tell me how long that, that took for the actual sit down and face your husband? Uh, 10 months. I, I was able to visit him at the beginning of October for the first time. Uh, so it took us a full 10 months to be able to uh, see each other again. Um, and um, initially when he, for the first four or five months, uh, all I had with him was five minute conversation on the phone a week. Um, no more than that. And uh, then oh, he was eventually moved to Wikaria, which was a little later, but it, it, it did improve a little bit. He was able to call me um, uh, for a little longer, a few more times a week, but our correspondence was always either being blocked or simply forgotten or not priority because uh, Graham sometimes it took them a month to pass an, uh, to print an email from me and and give it to Graham, and uh, I came to realize that it was mainly my communication with him. Uh, most people uh, sent emails which he received quickly, um, a week right. was as quickly in the in, wow. in jail, and there's um, most people got their emails passed to him four or five days a week. My one would take from three weeks to four weeks to him uh, for him to read uh, which by the time he mm. got my emails they were no longer news relevant and, uh, yeah. exactly mm. and uh, same with his letters to me um, I would go weeks without receiving a, a single letter and all of a sudden I would get eight nine twelve fifteen letters in one go um, so obviously what what looked like is they were holding them back until Graham would mm. complain. And when Graham complained, they then released all the letters and I would get all of them at the same time. And then we'll start again uh, the waiting game for another three weeks, four, five weeks, and then get another pile of letters because uh, Graham writes a letter to me every single day without fail. Yeah. Um, mm. So it's, that's how uh, it was for a long, long time. And uh, through Danielle and the page that she started, uh, bring awareness um, about this. Many people started uh, writing to him and uh, um, it became very evident that uh, um, we were making enough noise here for them to um, decide that uh, 
it might as well release those letters and it became a little easier, uh, but mainly because the public came to know what was going on. I am convinced that if we hadn't started that page and um, Daniel hadn't made that public, I'm pretty sure we would still be facing five minutes a day, a, a week of fun conversation. Mm. Just, just, just let... Sorry, what Sorry. was that, Jenny? I'm just saying he would still be um, in high security. Um, after Graham was arrested, he was um, started off in low security for, I can't remember how long, and suddenly they decided to um, take him to high security. And he was in for several months with hardened cr criminals and yeah, it wasn't until we actually started pushing and making this public and um, that he was moved back to low security but you know, on a remand facility. Um, Danielle, so, did they did they say why he was put in high security? Um, no, not that I know of. Okay. Did, did they say anything to you, Marta? No, as you say, that he was initially um, put on the a low security part of Spring Hill uh, prison, mm. but within a month um, he had been moved to to the high security. And not only that, that he was sharing a cell with um, inmates that were already serving a sentence. And he was still only on remand. So it doesn't quite sound right uh, to me why he ended up at Spring Hill and in high security. Um, I don't know. To this day, I would love to know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. We were never told. We just found that out through Graham mm. and, you know, his letters and <clears throat> seeing what he was going through, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the things that happened to him, Leo, is just <laughs> unfathomable, to be honest. It's, um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm, still sort of, I'm still grappling with the 10 months of not being able to actually see you. And mm. talk. I, I, I realized there was COVID uh, restrictions in that time as well. But mm. to not be able to see your husband for 10 months um, has been, I, I just I can't fathom it, mm. you know. Yes, and, it's, um, it's the, the, the mandates were lifted um, when July, I can't remember. July, how I think, when, yeah. Yeah, and uh, um, and uh, I believe the most jails did not lift the mandate. They kept on going, and uh, uh, for reasons of their own, I don't I don't understand why. But even after they open uh, for visitation, uh, Graham was still at Spring Hill, and uh, um, I never was able to go and visit him at Spring Hill. It was only when he was moved to Icaria that I was okay. then approved uh, because the process takes a long time um, of they have to post the forms to you and you have to post them back. You can't scan it and email to them, um, sure. which I don't understand why in this you know day and age of technology that we are still have to wait over a month uh, to uh, get the form done and approved. Um, and I had done one at Spring Hill, which took a long time. And then when Graham went to Waikere, I had to start the process again. Uh, just because I was approved with one uh, jail, it does not um, pass on to the next. So you have to start the process again. Um, so that's why, um, that's the reason why it took so long, I, I, I assume. I'm, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and uh, I'm not going to say they were persecuting us, but it suddenly sometimes mm. seems like that was the case. Yeah. Uh, so he was <clears throat> so he was held in custody. He has been refused bail three times before he oh. actually pleaded guilty. So he was there for ten months without even having a charge on him at the time, or did or was he charged? Are you allowed to say? I, I believe that he was charged first with with one thing, and uh, under under a, 
currently I can't say what it is because yeah, that's uh, right. Russian charges and I have already been warned by the police so I can't actually talk about them but uh, right. the first thing that he was charged with apparently carries a maximum um, jail sentence of three months so pretty right. much on anniversary of that um, that charge the three the first three months they up the charge to something a lot more serious um, which the New Zealand Herald have actually said so there's it's in yes. in the papers yeah, yeah. so that's public so yes yeah, public yeah, but knowledge was, but just a few days I ago remember that, yeah yeah no that is public knowledge and the, the charge that he was initially charged with is public knowledge now as well so um but I think it was a lot longer, wasn't it, Marta? They, we didn't find that out, what his charges were, until Counterspin got involved. He'd already we, been in we, jail for six months. We were not told uh, because okay. they were not telling me anything. Uh, but uh, it was, they had already decided, and it was uh, via the first, that uh, second lawyer that he had, uh, who is uh, personal friends with uh, Kelvin. And he was able to, the first time that I heard the word sabotage was actually through Kelvin, not the spin media. Uh, I had never heard it of that. Uh, yeah. And this was already yeah. May. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the things had already been set, but I was totally um, In the dark. kept out, out of the loop. Yes. Oh, mm. it's, hard, it's hard to to believe that we're talking about this in New Zealand. I, you know, yeah. and the reason why I've, I've kept pursuing this is because we are in New Zealand and this mm. is happening in yeah. New Zealand. And it was the same yeah. uh, discussion we've had with the people in Tokelau and how they were, you know, in uh, house arrest for nearly a year. Yeah. The same yeah. sort of, you know, but yeah. it, the people power is what happened and God's so, you know, sovereign plan over them and they were set free. And in this case, you know, it, it leads me to this question I'm going to ask you, Marja, what is true freedom? Um, I think truth is freedom. The Bible says, John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Um, we have been lied to by the the powers um to be and uh, um we are not free uh especially in graham's case we can't talk about it so there is no freedom in this situation at all because um people are left to imagine the worst and i can't we can't correct them because we are not allowed to talk about it so there is no freedom um because freedom exists where there is truth and transparency and in this case it couldn't yeah. be less transparent everything is kept very hush hush and uh, we hear absurd things that uh, we see on social media and we can't correct them hmm. what are your thoughts danielle i agree 100 percent with marta that truth truth is freedom jesus christ is freedom and yeah as long as we haven't got that, um, we can't be, we can't be free. As long as there's no truth, then yeah. So um, I just wanted to ask Marsha, your first meeting with Graham. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how he is and how he's doing? My first meeting with Graham was incredibly emotional. I. Um, I got there and I didn't know what to expect, never having been uh, to a jail before, but I was surprised that I could actually hug him and there were, there were no um, glass or any wall or anything between us. I was able to hug him, and which I did, and I cried for a long time. Um, and uh, I was a basket case after that first meeting. We were there for two hours, um, holding hands the whole time, and the time just flew. Before I knew it, the two hours were over. It felt like five minutes. And I came home and I was, I was devastated. And my friend Danielle um, called me that day and said, how are you? 
and I'm me being myself. Oh, I'm all good. Yes, I am. I am here. But she is very smart. She's very smart. She was able to pick up the vibes very quickly. And uh, she and Danielle does not live next door. She lives a good 40 minutes away from me. Um, but uh, 40 minutes later, the, the, the bell rang and it was Danielle with a bouquet of flowers and a, a wonderful hug and a, a friendship offered to me like that. It's just, it, it, it really, um, that day was saved by Danielle <laughs> because I was, um, I, I felt so lost and so, so miserable really. I, uh, and, uh, and yes, so it was, it was good to see him, but the, um, the roller coaster, the emotional roller coaster that I went through was um, pretty hard. It was pretty hard. And um, how is he doing in himself? Is he? Does he feel there is a? And I'm not going to say. That, I mean, uh, you know, from a we, we were looking at this from a spiritual perspective. Does he find a purpose as to why he's there? Absolutely. Graham is driven at the moment. Um, I uh, I have shared with quite a few people that um, Graham, with his um, Gideon's um, friends, had been praying to have access to prisons, to bring Bibles and to preach the gospel, and they were never given that. Uh, and all of a sudden, Graham finds himself arrested, and that he had the platform that he had been praying for, and uh, he is he is there. He he knows that, that the Lord had a uh, reason. For him to be there and he has wasted no time um, he has been um, speaking um, to people and bring a message of hope and salvation and we have um, been able to send a few bibles to him not too many because they actually have returned a couple of the bibles to me um, so we have to be careful how many books we send to him but that he has had some Bibles um, sent to him that he can give to people that are making the decision to follow Jesus and give their heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that is a very, very positive part of all this. Mm. Wow. Uh, Danielle, um, uh, first of all, I just want to say everyone needs a Danielle in their lives. <laughs> yeah, everyone needs a Danielle. Um, so but sure also, I've just put up, <laughs> I've just put up Chrissy's uh, um, question is can we write letters to him yes yes for sure and he loves receiving um mail so um that information is on the facebook page but i will do another post and make sure that that's easy um easily accessed for people but yeah if people write into him i think that really actually lifts his spirits he really enjoys getting everybody's messages of encouragement and yeah so that would be great. I um I just want to move on to just in regards to what where to from here. Uh, we know that a few days ago he has pleaded guilty. There will be uh, a sentence for him on the first of December. Is that is am I correct in saying that? First of December. Yes. How can we help so keep supporting uh, what you are doing uh, for him and with him? Uh, in regards to, I know that just a couple of days ago you had to do a car boot sale, so, you know, for fundraising, because there's just so much more that needs to be done uh, in regards to this. Uh, so either one of you can answer what would be the, where to from here? Yes, I think just um, keep sharing the story and raising awareness is a really big one. Um, yeah, sharing with people. Um, Yes, people need to know what's what's happening with this, you know. But, um, the other thing is, Marta and Graham need legal um, legal support. So there's a um, bank account number on the page where if anybody wanted to contribute anything financially, then that can be done. Um, letters, Graham loves receiving post. Um, yeah, I think. And your prayers, I think that's probably the most important. Your thoughts and prayers, we really much appreciated. What about you, Marsha? How can we help support you? 
Ah, yes, that's exactly what Daniel said. There's um, a bang on. Um, letters to Graham, they are very encouraging, uh, really lifts his spirit. They, he's got drawings, um, children um, draw beautiful things, and they are all on his wall in his cell, which uh, he does not have to share with anybody, so he can um, put all the artwork on the walls and uh, um, brightens his day because I, the place is pretty dreary and, you know, boring to look at. So his cell is apparently a very happy one with lots of very <laughs> helpful drawings, yes. Um, yeah, definitely very encouraging uh, to Graham to receive letters and emails uh, from friends and prayers. You know, we, we, we can never have enough. Um, I have a lot of people, people that I've never met before, recognizing me on the street and telling me I've been praying for you guys. And that is for me is the most awesome thing because mm -hmm. our, our God is an almighty God and uh, he's not deaf to our um, petitions. Mm -hmm. And so many saints out there praying for us. It can only be um, God is doing something amazing and uh, we may not like it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we, are not, we are not called to like, <laughs> we are called to walk in, in what he has put before us and uh, definitely prayer and um, emotional support as well. You know, uh, so many times Daniel calls me and, uh, and just to talk to me and just see how I am, see how I'm going and just lift me, it does lift me up a lot. Um, because there are days that I am not feeling particularly happy. And uh, so that definitely gives me a boost, knowing that I'm not alone in this. I have lots mm -hmm. and lots of people, lots of wonderful, beautiful friends mm -hmm. uh, that have come into my life because of this situation. I have met the most beautiful people uh, in the darkest, my darkest hour. Um, yeah. So that's the Lord is providing for me. Uh, in all aspects Amazing. of my life, because there is a, a huge need. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, Chrissy has said here that uh, she's asked if uh, open doors is an option for support. Have you heard of open doors? I'm not sure what is open doors? Oh, okay. So, Chrissy, if you could just explain a little bit, I'll be able to share it with everyone. Um, in regards to it, I, I think it might be a a non-for-profit organization from what I can remember. They they help those who are, uh, I guess, in prison. Um, so it, it could be a bit of but we'll wait for Chrissy to say. Uh, we've got lots of comments from people. And this one, I just want to show you both. Uh, Graham is now a missionary in prison, the greatest yes. honor given by the state. Oh, so yes. just be encouraged <laughs> that there are some people here who feel that this is, this is part of um, his uh, his mission um, yes. and he yeah. shares some amazing amazing stories doesn't he matter oh yes uh, the, some of the stories um that he shared you know in prison the things that have, have happened with them um, you know people that have lost all hope and graham's been able to reach and bring back to back, back to the lord it's it's amazing Yes. Uh, Chrissy said that uh, that they can also put a call out for legal help. So this is open doors. So what we'll do is I'll find out more information uh, for you after the show, and uh, we'll see how to um, how to get a, a hold of them. Uh, Tracy says I certainly hope that the gag is lifted from him once this is over. Mm. His own mental wellness, uh, having an ability to discuss what happened to him, it's an important part of healing. You know, I just think it's uh, yeah. it is it's an incredible um, part of healing. Uh, Valerie yeah. says you have such a wonderful you you have such a wonderful God given heart and an awesome awareness of your walk with Christ. You have this. Yeah. You know, this is to you both of what you're doing. Uh, yes. So Martin, um, Christy has just put in there. So it's www.opendoors.org.nz. So if you both, uh, maybe Danielle, if you can have a look at that. And um, mm. so what we're wanting to do yeah. is, uh, yeah, uh, so what we're wanting to do, people who are watching, we've had about um, between 100 and 120 people watching tonight. So wow. that, that's, that's been amazing, yes. <laughs> um, is to write, write to Graham. Uh, will you, if you look yes. up the page, uh, free Graham Phillip uh, blog page, is that correct, Danielle? 
Yes, it's free. Yeah, free. Um, Graham Phillip on Facebook, and there yeah. is a page on Telegram as well. But I'm not. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not managing that one. So. Okay, so if you have a look on Facebook, since you're you're sort of already there, uh, great, uh, free Graham Phillip, uh, there'll be opportunities for you to write uh, to him. To uh, so I'm on the process of actually going to visit him. So hopefully, oh, <laughs> hopefully awesome. I'll get a chance to, to yeah. go in and yeah. see him, and, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to bring to come Sorry. with me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the guitar and we can sing to him. Yeah. Yes, you'll be <laughs> wonderful. I know. I, 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 mean, there's, there's something you're doing. Sorry, Danielle. Um, if anyone wants to, to go and visit, all you need to do is email him and he can send yeah. you the forms because he um, he's allowed visitors every weekend, isn't it right, Marta? From yes, one Saturday and Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Yes, he's Sunday. allowed Saturdays and Sundays, um, only uh, yeah. the weekends, um, but he can, he can have as many. Like if there are 10 visitors booked to see him, I'm pretty sure we can all be there. I, I <laughs> don't know yet because the maximum that I've been there was just one extra, which is Danielle. Um, but uh, I have mm -hmm. seen uh, people there receiving uh, the whole extended family, lots of kids, lots of, of parents, grandparents, mm -hmm. so the whole funnel. So I, I don't think they would stop if many of us arrive to see Graham. I don't think they would stop us. Um, I do have a question here, and I, I don't know whether you're allowed to answer this or not, but uh, Pam has asked, are you able to share why he has pleaded guilty? That surprised me. Uh, yes, I can I can say that. Um, he he was for a long time um, standing on the on the not guilty. Um, he was going to go with it because he doesn't it doesn't feel that he's guilty of what they were actually saying. Um, that he uh, his intention basically was uh, and he was not happy with it. But uh, um, the lawyer. Um, after the sentence indication uh, that was given to him, the lawyer uh, asked him to consider pleading guilty because the, the, the going to the going to a trial with jury, it could it's a gamble. It could have gone one way or another, and if he was found guilty, he was facing ten years um, in, in 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 prison, and uh, he decided that he would bite the bullet and uh, plead guilty and hopefully make parole and come home um he all he wants is to mm -hmm. come home um so there are implications he, there are serious implications for him pleading guilty because he will become a convicted felon and he will carry that for the rest of his life um but mm -hmm. um we'll cross that bridge when we come to it at the mm -hmm. moment he just wants mm -hmm. to restart his life come back to his wife and right. uh, um live a normal life and that's what I want mm. for him as well. Because mm. the other thing uh, with that is that yeah. had he pleaded um, not guilty, it could have quite possibly been like a, a trial wasn't set for until the end of next year. Yes. So there's another year. He would have been behind bars for two years already. And if we see what's gone on like this year with all the delays and the postponements and the cancellations, he might have been behind bars for three years already before a trial even started. So yes. it was really a no-brainer in, in a way to, yeah, if it means that he can come home sooner. He's had a grueling 12 months in jail already, and I can't say I blame him for, yeah. for pleading guilty. I think I would have done the same. I don't know. You know, um, you know, there's a lot of judgment out there, but nobody has walked in his yeah. shoes. So, right. you know, no. for a and whole year really? of yeah. uh, being treated so terribly in some of the letters that yeah. I had read, so terribly, yeah. there, there is yeah. no way people have the right to judge why he, he did what he no. did. But we, we as, yeah. um, you know, Christian women, we are praying that, justice will flow like a river like has yes. as God intended uh, yes. for him that he will step yes. in and there'll be something pretty amazing that will happen and then through him I, I, I just I want to say now. yeah I agree I think the Lord will vindicate Graham um, one way oh. or another mm -hmm. because at the end of the day he is doing God's will I know is is not 
he's 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 being put there. He doesn't like it, but he's going about his business of sharing the gospel. And I do believe in my heart that the Lord will vindicate Graham. Um, and I just look forward to that day. Mm. Yes. You know, I just want to thank you both for being so um, open, honest, and just vulnerable even, you know, in regards to this uh, Graham's case. We we look forward to the day that he is released into your care, Marja, you know, once again, and you can make him those beautiful home-cooked meals. Um, Thank you. Is, is there something that either of you want to say just in parting uh, to encourage people? You know, Marja, none of us have walked in the shoes of, well, I don't know many people that have walked, you know, not having a husband here for a whole year. I, I just couldn't imagine it. Um, but to ask you, what, what are some words that you can, for parting, that would encourage people to to stand their ground, you know, and to be, um, you know, be encouraged by the Lord? So well, I think, you know, if you live in obedience to the Lord, um, regardless of the situation that you're going through, uh, you will come out on the other side a, a better person um, because this, if, if this is, is his will for my life, then I need to be in the center of it and, and not doubt um, and just believe that, that he's in control. Uh, just this weekend, we, we just has been a very, very hard weekend, um, very tough. And Danielle knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's been really challenging, but throughout this whole this whole um, period of this last two or three days, I have known in my heart that God is in control, and I refuse to give in to despair. Um, and we were very close to get, you know, because we were a little bit in a desperate situation regarding mm -hmm. uh, Graham um, returning. They, uh, they 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 were playing very hard to get, and they were wanting to put Graham back in Spring Hill, and in fact, he did end up there. Uh, yesterday for the whole day, but we out here we were making you know war against the, you know the principalities to release Graham to go back to Wikiria and he was released after 8 p.m. He was there the whole day. Wow. I don't know why they insisted on taking Graham to Spring Hill, but uh, throughout this whole thing, I had the peace in my heart that God is in control. It didn't. Um, look as if we had any control whatsoever, which we didn't. So the person that needs to be in control is God because he knows what he's doing. We don't. We All we can do is just pray and uh, ask him you know, for the strength to carry on. And and I know that uh, you know he's holding on to me. It's it's not me holding on to that rock you know, with this, you know, the skin of my teeth. It's, he is holding on to me. I have no doubt mm -hmm. he's in control. Oh, that's beautiful, Matter. Thank you. Danielle, do you have any last words? Yeah, I 100% uh, I agree. And um, it's really important just to remember that this is the spiritual war that we're in and we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Um, just to continue having faith and, and trust that God has got this because he has. He's what's got, I've seen it. You know, he's yes. what's got Marta angry through all of this. And we just need to know that we all know how the story ends. It's God wins. And mm. people just need to remember that. And that's, mm. yeah. Um, I just want to thank you both so much for being part of uh, Island Girl Views tonight. Uh, it's been uh, sobering. It's been uh, so good to hear uh, from your from your perspective, Marta, because so much that is out there, so many comments, you, you just have to at some point just put it aside and know that your story. And I, I just want to finish with this because this is the basis of uh, Island Girl Views is there's a verse in Revelations that says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And yes. I that part of the word of your testimony is your story. And you were able to share that tonight. And I'm hoping, again, that we will have another opportunity uh, to speak to you both again. But tonight, thank you so much uh, to you both. And I think we're just going to close at this point and um, just...
just know that we will be uh, praying for you, uh, that we're thinking of you, and hopefully with the practical things that happen, uh, the practical things that Danielle, you have said uh, in this, that, that we'll be able to uh, write to him, uh, possibly visit him, be able to, uh, you know, donate for his legal fees, uh, that we will be here for you for the journey, uh, for you both. So I just want to say thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, Leah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Appreciate it. Bless you. See God you. bless.